really finding his stride here over on the Snake lineup, and it seems like it's a definite upgrade so far. I think that's what we expected, at least in terms of champion. Yeah. Born, he's playing picks that Barker certainly wasn't playing last season, excelling on the likes of LeBlanc and Cassiopeia yeah. that we didn't see coming out from Barker, save maybe one or two times. And just again, the flexibility that... that just saying the word flexibleness when you're talking about Snake is just not something. We never thought of Snake as no. a flexible team. They were so pigeonholed. Crystal had to be a hyper carry. Barker basically had to be playing uh, Zerath, sometimes Azir. About, yep. They were very, very inflexible, and finally it hurt them when it came to the semi-finals, right at the death of the season. Suddenly now, two games of Crystal on Spirit, two wins. The playbook, the playbook to play against Snake, which was once so predictable, so often viewed, is now... It's pretty nebulous. Yeah, and you've got the fact that Yu has picked up an MVP on both Azir and LeBlanc, two very different champions as far as playstyle is concerned. The fact that Crystal, he's decided to bring out the Sivir, it's much more impressive this time around. And look, things are looking great. Azir has actually been banned away here. You're not going to see that one, and Gragas going to be the answering ban from Snake. They don't want to first pick it away. We'll see what Beast is thinking about. Of course, Rek'Sai hasn't been looked at just yet. She is one of Beast's sort of favorite picks here in the jungle because he needs to be on something that he can control the map on. And we haven't seen his Nunu just yet. It was available last time and ignored. So how do World Elite react? You mentioned that two very high priority junglers are available and that middle has been banned away. So it's probably going to be Cinder Hulk junglers for both sides. I guess Evelyn is still in the pool as a champion that has been picked in recent times. Giving up Rek'Sai, which I think will have to be the case here. I think you first pick Rek'Sai just because whatever Spirit chooses, it's not going to be able to match the pressure that Rek'Sai can put out. And we've already seen what happens when he chooses Sejuani against Rek'Sai. Kakao ran over that matchup. And Beast has the same yeah. potential if we do see the Sejuani, probably the most powerful pick available, locked in. Unless they can pull off a really impressive Nunu comp, Spirit's running out of options. Well, it certainly is, but... Somehow, the Callista managed to get through this draft. Mystic has played it in what the past. That's, that's, I'm going to pause you here. What a world where Crystal has Callista available and doesn't snap it away with first That's pick. pretty crazy, actually. But, of course, Snake did not waste too much time there, picking away the Rek'Sai immediately, making sure that Beast was in a, on a comfort pick. And it seems like Crystal is going to be okay with taking something else into the matchup. We'll see what he decides to bring there. Of course, Urgot is still available. And it certainly wasn't any fault in his Urgot yesterday. He played a very good Urgot, even though they lost the game to unlimited yeah. potential. That was more a compositional issue. No wave clear. Urgot not helping in that regard. Urgot is a flexible option. It does have what has proved to be a good laning matchup. Maybe not at level 1-2 like we thought before. Maybe you have to go for that lane swap, then swap into it. But there's a lot of options. Even Sivir just for the team comp might be the way. And when you see the likes of Maokai and Rek'Sai, Sivir is screaming out as a great compositional choice for Snake. Oh, most definitely. You was thinking about a Ziggs there as well, as Ella is going to lock away it's gonna the It's going to come eventually. It most certainly is. And I think it may actually be even this game. Because, of course, staying away from a Cassiopeia, good idea. Exactly. Long-range wave clear, yeah. great poke. A short to medium range wave against a long range wet mage, it should work really well if they go for the Ziggs. It's been much mooted about, but he hasn't actually played it in competitive for quite no. a while. Hasn't had a lot of chances, you know, has been sitting on the bench. But you Ziggs used to be a legendary thing, just like Izihun Ziggs that hasn't been spotted yet. Used to be such a respected thing. We're going to see it eventually. Yeah, and now with control mages making it back into the pick ban phase, then you have to think that Ziggs definitely one of those options. And Mystic... Going to lock away the Lulu here. Could be going into the hands of a Luka. Might actually... You know, it's be, going to be going to Luka. It, yeah, but look, you know, GA could be uh, picking that Nautilus away for Spirit there in the jungle. Who knows? We've seen Nautilus in the top lane. I don't really know what could possibly happen. Crystal is going to think about the um, Sivir yet again. You mentioned that being a strong pick, and you can go towards the Orianna if he wants to. We've seen this already today. Hatong didn't have the greatest time on the on the Orianna, but Rookie yesterday was out of control. And it's just a really, really powerful Orianna comp. You've got one of the best ball carriers in Maokai with the targeted Twisted Advance. Yeah. You've got the potential for Rek'Sai to pull off some shenanigans from different angles with the Unburrow. Orianna does fine against Cassiopeia. You're going to get pressured. You're probably going to get harassed out of a bit of CS. But once you hit level 9, you have fairly easy instant wave clear. You'll do just fine in the matchup. It's mid-game power aplenty from Snake, and it's strong lanes for Rek'Sai to gank for between the Thresh and the Maokai having CC in those lanes. And then, of course, in level 6, there being burst potential in the mid. Just a really nice balanced comp that 
nobody thought Snake could play, and they're showing this season, this is something they're quite comfortable with. Yeah, and it's certainly looking great. And I'm very frightened for GA here as well, because of course, I mean, you get a slight movement speed by landing some poison there and as far as Cass Cassiopeia is concerned, but Rek'Sai is going to be able to close that gap. And now Spirit has put himself in this massive hole of being on the Sejuani one more time. I mean, you can say that at least the Cassiopeia does have kill pressure on the Orianna, might be able to push her in. At least Jinx is very good at controlling, sorry, Lulu is very good at controlling waves. So yeah. if they can both push in, maybe Sejuani will have that space to be able to farm up. But it's not, once again, not an ideal situation no. for Spirit. Didn't have the best game last game, got caught a little bit too much. Was definitely not on the same wave communication-wise with his team that we might have expected. But a lot is riding on him again. And if Rek'Sai gets in his face... It's going to be difficult for Spirit to be able to carry this game. Yeah, it's going to be tough. And of course, they need to try and make room. And Snake put a whole lot of effort into making sure that Beast could be relevant last game. We'll see whether World Elite are going to be able to do the same thing as we see. Maokai versus Lulu. Pretty standard top lane matchup. I keep saying standard top lane matchup, but we're not really seeing too much that's very different. Of course, the Lulu is slightly strange there as Beast is going to be taking on Spirit now in the jungle, and this has to be the key matchup for this one. Absolutely. If Rex can get a lot of work done, snowball multiple lanes, I fear for Waddle and Spirit especially. We power through these picks, ending up on just the AD carry support matchup. Siver Thresh, a lot of power. Sorry, Siver and Nautilus, I believe, a lot of power coming through for Snake. Yeah, well, actually, it was the Siver Thresh. You were right the first time around, but. That it denies away that Thresh Callista combination, which we've seen leapfrogging around the bottom lane, really doing fantastic things, and not going to be coming through there. But of course, Nautilus being able to have another opportunity to CC up a team, something that Nautilus just doesn't need. Doesn't need at all. He most certainly doesn't. Let's get onto the rift. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, for game two between Snake and World Elite. And look, Snake already positioning themselves towards the top side of this map. The lane swap coming through straight away as Beast is actually the one hanging around here. Tremor sense actually spotting out the exact pathing of a Luka, but Luka's smart enough to just ward that metal brush and just get the hell out of there. Yeah, and they know that he's used his trinket ward already, actually, having seen him move towards that brush. It opens up this aggression. This is actually yeah. quite calculated aggression coming through from Snake. Yeah, and they can see Tremor Sense there as well. Oh. In fact, Ella probably could have found the position as Aluka actually moved out. I'm not sure how like they, they didn't had, know. I feel like they had more information. Maybe it was slightly out of range? Not sure. Aluka did manage to get an auto attack on that ward, so they definitely know that that's there. As World Elite now positioning themselves, of course, Nautilus with the most CC of a level one champion in the entire game. Absolutely. When your passive is a CC, probably safe bet you're going <laughs> to yeah. have the most CC. But, of course, Snake not going to be face checking anything here as Flandre and Ella are just going to spot the rest of WE heading up this river. It's going to be matching of the lane swaps, actually, you have to think. It's a yeah. blue side lane swap. The Civ is backing away. We saw Callista in the top lane, not really priced into back, but they're actually all backing. And it's going to go still trying to enact the lane swap. Yeah, it's very, very strange. Of course, Snake will have their bottom lane towards the bottom side of the map. That is certainly a big deal, but they're going to miss out on a few creeps here in the first wave. As you saw, World Elite also missing a couple of creeps here in the first wave. I think the reason why you see this is that although... Siver Thresh is actually very strong against Callista Nautilus in lane. You get Dragon Control if you're the blue side and move towards the bottom side of the map. You have Rek'Sai is already going to have a lot of jungle pressure. So I think just giving yourself first option for Dragon when you have so much mid-game power like Snake. I don't think you can get three Dragons in the hole when you have the Maokai Rek'Sai who really err towards the mid-game and the early mid-game. So I think you have to give yourself Dragon killing potential. So I don't mind the counter swap by Snake. Yeah, no jungle follow going to be coming through here. Of course, Spirit going to be all on his lonesome and already Beast moving around to try and put the pressure on. Look at the ward already Ooh. here. Ella put that one down. Three members are going to spot out the piggy. And Ella oh, actually missing that death sentence. Very unlike this player, but they are going to be able to steal away this blue buff. That's a really smart move from Snake. They have the multiple members in the bottom side. It was very risky for Spirit to be trying to take that blue buff anyway. Fast push coming in from Wadley on the top side. Spirit's, uh, sorry, Siv is definitely going to be happy to opt into a counter fast push in the bot. 
Yeah, if anyone knows how to fast push, it is most definitely Sivir. As that ricochet, you can see already bouncing around these creeps on this bottom side. But, of course, the push already in full effect in that top side. The viewer is just going to use that dissonance in order to clear out these minion waves. Doesn't have the mana regen to be able to match all the pressure coming through from Cassiopeia. The freeze is on, but there's a lot of members in the bottom side. They know that they can't possibly be equal members, though, because there's no way at the moment for Mystic to end the freeze up top. Wants to pick up unanswered CS, so they have to back away from the four-man snake push. Yeah, and GA actually, you can see, pushing aggressively here in the mid lane, but full vision of the Cassiopeia. They know that it's only three members at maximum here, and when Aluka still level one and Spirit was pressured out of his own jungle, Snake, complete free reign on this bottom side. Look, they both have fairly low item ceiling, so item floors do Lulu and Maokai. Maokai probably gets the edge because you just get a right to score in some boots. He's, yeah, pretty, he's much pretty much ready done. to go. Has the passive, sorry, the, the ultimate to really get him going in team fights. Although Lulu no slouch, but both of them so far away from ultimates now. Level 1 versus level 3. Levels for Flandre. Eventually he'll be able to teleport to lane and do just fine. Yeah, well this is what we meant is the fact that, you know, the tree, we've seen Maokai's fall as far behind as you like and still do their job. And that's sort of exactly what happens. Of, of course, Aluka probably needs to have a little bit of AP to make sure that his shields and everything are going to be as relevant as possible. But Crystal's already pushed down this outer turret in the bottom lane. And that's why the moment that uh, Mystic and Conan got aggressive up top, Crystal's like, thank you very much. Had multiple members, of course. The jungle follow meant that there was four members in the bottom side. They denied, what, three, four waves to the turret. Took the turret down happily, and then they can counter swap top. Didn't take down the dragon, so that's unfortunate for Snake. They weren't able to pick up the dragon advantage, but given just how much they've denied from Lulu, maybe that's just mission accomplished. Yeah, and we've seen as well Snake not really prioritizing these early dragons. They like getting early gold on these maps, trying to snowball leads from very early on, and so far it has been working out for them because, of course, making sure that you have the items for these mid-game fights that they love so much is very important. Luka finally picking up CS under the turret, but Sivir will eventually enter lane, push it in, and try and make his life hell. Thresh is in the area. Wasn't clear if they were going to go for a gank around the mid side. You still level 5, so not a lot of kill pressure onto Cassiopeia. Yeah, and Jay almost looking like he didn't take any damage. Ladies and gentlemen, he did. That dissonance did do some work as Flandre just trying to sit underneath his turret. We've spoken at length about Amalkai's ability to farm from range, and he's going to be able to do just that. I guess Spirit is proving your point. They had the option to choose between bottom lane turrets, securing that and denying CS, or picking up the dragon. And they definitely value the CS, as you mentioned, over the dragon, because they're happily giving Spirit this dragon in the bottom side. Dragon's not really a scary objective till the third, arguably the fifth in a lot of ways. The first one, not really relevant at the six minute mark. And by the time they have a couple of items on their carries, maybe you get over the one item hump that Oriana specifically faces before she finishes her death cap to pile on the AP. When they're ready to fight around that third dragon timer, they're going to be very powerful gold-wise. Yeah, that's exactly right. But Crystal is going to be able to take a Dark Passage and continue clearing out these minion waves. Aluka hasn't seen a minion in quite a long time. But of course, Flandre, although he's low on farm, has been sitting in the wave picking up experience. And that's the big difference is the experience advantage. You compare 11 CS to what you get with a level, the level um, the amount of like base stats you get from leveling, honestly, is big at this point. He's going to hit level 5 instantly. Level 3 is Aluka. It's deceptive, but Maokai is ahead of Lulu in terms of stats. Yeah, able to get there, but Crystal still clearing out this wave. He's taken a little while to be able to fast push this turret, of course. Only 7 minutes in. It's not exactly all that easy, but Mystic and Conan have made their way around. Avarice Blade, the investment started already oh, very yeah. early by Crystal. Maybe too greedy. Probably didn't have enough gold for the pickaxe, but the pickaxe would have meant this turret would already be down. Definitely. Now Mystic shows up in lane, has no real items to speak of himself, so the AD carries investment banking and sustaining respectively. Finally, the pickaxe completed. Should still have control of the wave. That's just the reality of the Sivir versus 
uh, Super versus yeah. Callista matchup. We'll just go back top because not worried about Dragons in the slightest. Yeah, not too concerned about it. World Elite are able to at least continue the work that they'd already put into this top lane outer turret as Conan's actually just going to wander away. Was thinking about backing his Beast. There's the flash on Burrow as well. Beautiful play as the exhaust comes through on top of Beast. He's going to try and get out of there. Mystic using that martial poise to get him out and Crystal Flashes forward and gets denied his kill. Conan, though, he might get delivered. Not going to happen. Flandre locks down that one, but Snake already 2-0. and zero. And Snake engineered that situation so expertly. Beast was waiting in that brush for a long time, collecting information. They just finally pushed up the minion wave down bottom. Flandre pushed it into Lulu. Would have missed two to three piled waves yeah. if she teleported. And didn't even have the wild growth, because, of course, the levels have been denied so effectively. They take the turret. They get two kills. All of that was not just a coincidence. It was a complete outthinking by Snake of World Elite. Yep, really beautiful play. Unfortunately, they weren't able to get any kills onto Crystal, but honestly, that is not the main point of that particular issue. Outer turret did fall down in the top lane as well. Two turrets to zero. This is the kind of snowball that Snake really want. This is what they play for the majority of the time they hop onto the rift. And 3,000 gold at 10 minutes into the game, that is nothing. That is, it's not nothing. It's fantastic here for Snake. So let's go back to World Elite vs. IG game 2 yesterday. You weren't here to cast it with me, Atlas, but the big factor there was it was a Sejuani with her lanes losing, with lots of disarray, Rek'Sai getting in her face, and honestly, no one could react because they were so far behind in lanes. Snake is engineering a very similar situation here, taking out both outer towers in the top and bottom side of the map, giving them the ability to push these wards, you can see, aggressively into Sejuani's jungle. You can see blue side wards around the red, the red uh, the red side jungle of uh, World Elite, they can start really contesting Spirit's buffs, keep the Sejuani behind, and ensure that there's never a beast level Sejuani in the late game like we saw in the previous game. Yeah, precisely. And GA has actually sort of been put into a situation where he needs to be picking up the tankiness early on, actually deciding to go for more of a Karthus-esque build that we've seen coming through recently from the likes of Assassin. And picking up that Riley's Crystal Scepter after the tier. I think it's just insurance, knowing that Rek'Sai has a lot of jungle pressure, already seeing Flandre so adept at these teleport plays. We named him the Time Lord for a reason. There's been a lot of threat. If you're picking up a Giant Spell as Cassiopeia before a Blasting One, before your Archangels, you're respecting the multiple mid-game threats from Snake, and it's probably an astute choice. Yeah. Well, Crystal using that Boomerang Blade to try and keep these minion waves at bay while the rest of World Elite are putting a lot of pressure towards this top side. Spirit realizing that he can't really be on his own farming out his jungle. He needs to be helping push out these waves. And despite doing all this split pushing, going for the dives, having two kill involvements, Maokai finally finds time with a wave, easily picks up the CS, and now is equal with the Lulu, who with a Luka, who wasn't even able to teleport in and affect a previous battle. So those 10, 15 CS advantages that Lulu picked up earlier, completely negated. Yeah, and you as well. He's having a fine time in this lane as well. No extra pressure to be put on by GA at all. And Oriana just doing Oriana things here in this lane. Does have the Athenes on Holy Grail as well. M uh, mana is not going to be too much of an issue. And look, as soon as the next big item comes through, these shockwaves are going to be really, really frightening. Absolutely. Needless to large rod comes through into Death Cap, and we're going to see both defensive and offensive utility coming through from you. And that's with Xie, who's already felt pressured enough to delay damage further and further. Yeah, there's a shockwave, actually, as Yu's actually going to get petrifying gaze. Crystal trying to want, run through and try and get some auto attacks down, but it was a very beautiful ult from Xie, but he used every summoner spell. A cleanse and flash had to be used, as you can see. The flash was available, then had to be used. That's really awkward times for Xie, feeling the pressure from a Siva yeah. gank of all things. Not really the most threatening thing usually. No Sejuani on the side of Snake to be able to force the cleanse in many situations, but cleanse flash defensively. Now Cassiopeia is going to have to play defensively with that tank build. So defensive itemization, defensive positioning. They're setting up you to be aggressive, but I uh, used dead. Yeah, you did die in the end. GA actually managed to pick up that kill. Flandre. Looking for a Luka who was forced to flash over towards his inner turret, which is getting a lot of pressure on it as well. World Elite now starting off a dragon of their own. They're going to be able to pick up their second. The shutout of dragons continues here for Snake as they're going to try and trade that one for the top lane inner turret. 
A lot of structures missing on the map here from World Elite, but they're taking down these dragons at a pretty hot clip. And it's just whether Snake can actually... That crystal. Yeah, it's a very nice spell shield, but you can't spell shield enough here as Conan tanks up just enough turret shots. So two out of the outer turret being taken in top gives Snake the potential control over the red side jungle from Spirit. So if that can keep Sejuani behind, it might be a smart trade. If they're not able to cause pressure in that red side jungle, it's starting to look better and better for World Elite. Second Dragon, immediate stats, not that exciting, but they're going to have position on the third. They should be able to finally push out and take the second outer turret in the bottom lane. So at least on both sides of the map, they're equalized in terms of outer turrets. The inner turret and top will be the only real reward for Snake's pressure in the first 14 minutes of the game. Yeah, and Beast has been spending a whole lot of time in the enemy jungle here as well. Spirit hasn't really had access to anything as Beast took the red buff and now is taking away these raptors as well. Yu makes his way back into this lane, only picked up an amplifying tome to augment his Athenes on Holy Grail. Looks like he might be going towards the Luden's Echo build that we've seen popularized, but wasn't as impressed by her tongs when he picked it up today. I mean, it gives you that instant wave clear. Your QW will just explode the back line and be able to push in a wave. But I agree, I, I do prefer sheer AP stacking on Orianna. Yeah. Even though once you move towards 40% CDR, you're moving and attack moving so quickly that you do get multiple Luden's Echoes procs out in a couple of seconds, let alone, let alone during a team fight. Sheer AP with the defensive scaling seems like the more attractive option, but a lot of these players fitting Luden's into their build primarily as a second item. Yeah, it's not too bad. We saw a little bit of action there as Spirit tried to lock down Crystal, but Dark Passage was able to be taken and Death Sentence didn't find the mark here. Ella really needs to get his eye in just a little bit on that one, but we'll see whether he can get these plays happening. We saw Hart previously on that Thresh doing incredible things, and as this game moves forward, we'll see whether Ella can step into those shoes. It's important for Wadley to pick up the first few Dragons because They've got a very similar comp. They've got the whole Cassiopeia and Hyper Carry comp rocking here between Cassiopeia yeah. and the Callista. Callista's caught between those two core items that we talk about, the Hurricane and the Bloodthirster. But when those two items are complete, the difference this game will be they've got two dragons. So you're expecting Snake to opt into fights around the third dragon. That means they'll be coming into the Petrifying Gaze and theoretically a Ren setting Callista. So Dragon is a very necessary objective for World Lead to fight for. They have aggressive options with the Sejuani, but with the position that we expect from Cassio Callista, we expect them to be better going defensive, but finally an offensive option with the Sejuani. Yeah, exactly. So. Spirit is going to be stacking a whole lot of that health. He's going to be a massive tank towards the later stages of the game. And if he's going to take the focus like he did a lot of the time, then there's wild growth available. There's a whole lot of different options. And Conan's going to be there as well as a secondary pseudo tank. Flandre is going to find himself in amongst a whole lot of members of the enemy team. But look at that, clearing out that way very quickly with the Vengeful Maelstrom. It's worth knowing that, as you mentioned, Spirit's going to be becoming more and more team fight relevant, initiation relevant in the late game. Sejuani doesn't have any defensive statistics in her kit, needs to build it up through items. Cinder Hulk doing the lovely multiplicative scaling in that yep. particular regard. It actually gives them a team fight um, smoothing scale in a lot of ways in that they're very defensive at this present point. They want to be fighting on their terms, but once Sejuani gets strong enough, she can be that solo initiator. So if they buy enough time through objective fights, fighting with those Ren set builds around the Dragons. And then the late game, they can transition to the super aggressive spirit, diving in with four health items and a wild growth. That will really suit World Elite's game plan. They didn't have the offensive option last time because it was the Gragas, but now they have Sejuani, a much more reliable initiator in the late game. Yeah, and this time around, we are going to have Beast hanging out in this bottom lane, sort of split pushing just a little bit as Mystic's actually going to find Flandre here, looking to try and get something happening. Doesn't quite get there, but Mystic, in fact, gets it turned around on him. There's the flash. Flandre just pounds Mystic into the ground, picks up the kill, and maybe a little bit of over-aggression there for the Callista. I mean, it had to be. It was only Thresh providing support, but obviously not accounted for. Ignite rides down. Doesn't matter how much lifesteal you were getting out of that, uh, out of the lifesteal choice that he opted into. And he just falls. So that's just over-aggression coming through from Mystic. But empowered after picking up the kill on Siva earlier in the bottom lane. Still trying to cause a lot of pressure in the mid of Snake, and they're chipping away at Cassiopeia's turret. Yeah, that turret down very, very low. Only about a quarter health here as Spirit is hanging around. Is able to get some form of defensive fan going on here as Conan is going to make his way in as well. Crystal has to take the Dark Passage, but is going to utilize that in order to get to safety. And leaves himself a ricochet behind. And 
I'm just going to use that boomerang. And man, Sivir just clears out a minion wave very, very well. Absolutely. No real need to commentate that one, Atlas. It's always no. the case. I just like minion waves, Bubba Smithy. You know that. If you like freezing minion waves and getting big stacks off them, the pushing, it's just not so much <laughs> action happening there. Yeah, and Diana's taking gigantic waves. Mystic still struggling, still doesn't have the first big item completion, has the parts of what will be a Renset centric build. But 20 minutes in, you usually want the Bloodthirster and a Rika bow at this point. Kind of stuck between three options right now. Yeah, and of course, Beast and Flandre are going to get pretty tanky towards the later stages of the game. But of course, this Renset build might be a little bit more effective against this particular lineup. And if anyone's clumping specifically around an objective they feel necessitated to fight, like the Dragon, honestly, rushing the Hurricane at this point would have felt great, but it just would have been an item timing issue. Stuck between two identities means that Renset is not going to be a huge threat to Snake, but still a distinct possibility. Yeah, and soon enough, Mystic will have that item completed, and we'll see whether it is going to be at a relevant stage. As Bird Dragon now looking at here for World Elite, Lulu really needs to group faster. Wants to be the person in position first to really stop any aggressive wards from coming through. But Maokai is going to make it to the Dragon first. No teleport use for by Aluka, but they will. This will be at the cost of at least a couple of wards that World Elite have set up. Yeah, Yu does have the needlessly large rod, so. A lot of ability power available for this Orianna. Spirit tanky as all heck with so much health here. Crystal going to need to build another Blade of the Ruin King, I, I think, this game because the health stacking from Spirit is pretty massive. And actually, Spirit's actually going to find Flandre starting off this blue buff here as well. And did Flandre pick that one up? No, he didn't. So it was actually locked down, I believe, by Spirit. No one used their smite, so there still is a lot of ban pressure from both. Oh, oh my goodness, there's a boomerang coming across as well as Beast actually flashes over the wall. GA uses the petrifying gaze, but Flandre turns around just in time. Beast now finds himself on his own, burrows himself away. And Snake, they keep their jungler alive. GA very, very low, but no one's dead. And because they've pushed up pink ward so aggressively, they have an aggressive pink ward in World Elite's brush around that mid lane. Ward coverage oh, in wow. general is to the advantage of Snake. A couple of World Elite wards down, but with Gia so choked out, they're gonna try and push this out of mid turret and finally get the outer wave. No, looks like they're gonna prefer to pick up what should be a largely uncontested dragon. Yeah, it depends whether Gia can make it over there in time. Of course, Snake with a whole lot of damage there in their arsenal. And there is at least the Scuttle Crab warding available here as Snake do just take the dragon and leave. Waterly, they ping onto the mid lane out of turret. No minion wave right now. Siva completely out of position. Oriana as well. Given that it's below half health, oh, this should be Landry. a free tower for Waterly. Nope. It prompts a teleport. Yeah, Flandre is going to teleport on top of that one. Does have the home guards here as well. Spirit looking to try and collapse onto Beast. He's at full health, though. The stun onto only one member, probably not going to be enough. Mystic now has to deal with the whole team of Snake on his own. He's not going to be able to. They trade the AD carry for the jungler after the dragon has fallen down. And Snake, they might even be able to take this out of turret in the mid lane. Super strange shot calling coming through from Waterleap once again, choosing to use all their resources into a super tanky full health beast. And leaving Mystic helpless, nothing he could do. Heal was available, but Wild Growth just dis didn't do anything to dissuade. Trading your jungler for a mid turret and the enemy AD carry is a very positive trade for Snake. They're on the board in terms of dragons as well, so you push out any sort of fifth dragon threat. And if the last game's anything to go by, very hard to force five dragons out of Snake. Yeah, and Snake as well. I mean, last time they let World Elite pick up three dragons in a row. This time they managed to pick up the third one for themselves, really slowing this game down. World Elite are going to be able to get a favorable stack of minions here in the mid lane and take down the outer turret. But you've got Crystal just farming a massive wave in the bottom lane. You just cleared out a gigantic wave in the top side as well. You can see he's managed to create a lead for himself. And... Man, this game so far looking fantastic for Snake. And even if the shot calling's been a bit wonky from Waddle, they did have the side waves really well pushed up. You saw Oriana and Siva both had yep. to react to clumped up many ways pushing into inner tide. So that's something that Waddle Elite have really adjusted between games. You can see Siva still clearing wards in the bottom side. Which is I believe three or four waves in both the top and bottom side of the maps pushing in. A lot of standing gold picked up by Snake and not terribly punished by Waddle. They could not rush down that mid inner turret, even though the two big wave clearers between Oriana and Siva were out of position. Yeah, and this again is sort of another story of Flandre just being a pretty fantastic top laner. He's been 
in all of the right places, managing to create the opportunities for Snake that he needs to. 2-0-2 two, two now does have the Righteous Glory completed. And we've spoken at length about the fact that Flandre loves picking up Maokai, and we're starting to get an idea of exactly why that is, even in this 5.8 metagame. And Maokai shows up at a team fight, just so much more power than Lulu on the other side of things. Lulu only really has defensive options. Home Guard Teleport is the advantage available for Flandre. Righteous Glory for even more initiation power. On the hunt, gonna make him faster. Maokai's gonna make things happen. Aluka might alleviate a bit of pressure, and that's the difference between the two. Flandre loves to go ahead, he loves to be aggressive, yeah. and Maokai suits him. And Papa Smithy, you're going to be very happy. You, you listen to, and he's picked up that Rabidin's death cap on top of the fact that he just had the uh, amplifying tome just chilling out. So that could possibly be going towards the either Void Staff or maybe even getting a Luden's Echo before he has that magic penetration in there. Nice pierce on the, uh, you there from Mystic, just to try and get some extra damage down. I just have to add you to those list of thrift shoppers. Yeah, oh yeah. 435 gold, need to fill up my item slots, get a bit more power, rather than necessarily tipping my hand towards the Luden's Echo. He has played on a team with Name before. The ultimate thrift shopper. The ultimate thrift shopper. Back that again somehow after being relegated. <laughs> <laughs> on to King, definitely not on to Starhorn Royal Club 2.0 with a different name. But we are going to see them very, very soon, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, this evening we are going to go through the remaining teams here in the LPL that we haven't seen just yet. But first, World Elite need to try and fight back here against Snake, who are already one game up. They lost a game yesterday against Unlimited Potential, managing to turn around what was a difficult situation. It was looking bad for Unlimited Potential for moments there, but Snake sort of throwing away their advantages just a little bit, and maybe that could be something that World Elite can wait for here, wait for a mistake, because we haven't spoken about waiting for mistakes in quite a long time, but again, Snake, that might be something to do. You don't need to mince your words so and choose them so specifically there, Atlas. They were winning <laughs> until you decide to randomly dive <laughs> Nexus double turrets, die, and just give the advantage straight to UP. Probably not going to see the same approach here from Snake. Probably some choice words from his new teammates. Two MVPs and then an MVP-worthy throw coming through from you. No, I liked in his it. First I felt three like he was, he was completely had the idea of what Snake is all about. Well, I mean, know? he's had three games, two MVPs, and then threw a game. So everything's <laughs> been about you in three games. Oh, thanks. What oh, about you, on, you Atlas? You're the player, wonderful, the player. Got it, got it, got it. <laughs> I'm hanging in the back here. A split push coming through expertly from Flandre, though, Aluka. One thing he can do is clear waves. He can certainly do that. Has picked up Lulu quite a few times in his career in the LPL so far, but Snake going to take down the Gromp, and this is something that they definitely like doing. Killing Gromps has been a thing that Flandre himself has loved to do, mostly when he picks up Smite, but even when he's playing as a tree. Not too worried there. 30 CS in the lead, even more at this current stage now for Maokai, and World Elite, they've noticed the fact that it's 26 minutes into the game, and they haven't done a Baron yet. Well, I mean, honestly, just start the Baron. They have so much Baron. Now, just even more than last game when you have Callista for the Baron secure. Of course, there is a smart pink around the area, so maybe it's biting off too much before they can potentially chew it. And the result, with all this Baron pressure, they were just so smart last game. You noticed every yeah. time they went for Baron, Gia had a blue buff, so it wasn't a situation where you burn down the Baron and you're oom for a fight. No, they always had the blue buff. They were always smart about when they chose to Baron. Baron is their best objective to fight for, because it's one they can burn down almost instantly. Yeah, Dragon going to be up in another four seconds. Snake with positional advantage here. They're looking to try and find something as there is a ward over the side. Conan gets caught up and instantly destroyed, almost as the Fate Skull is going to save him on 100 health. But my god, that was an incredible amount of damage. And definitely won't save their dragon hopes. It's only a second dragon for Snake. Will World Elite pull the trigger? See blue pings onto Baron, but we're not clear yet whether World Elite are going to all in for this Baron. Cassio's not quite in position. She's going to be there late, so it looks like it's going to be a bit too optimistic to try and burn down Baron with yep. all five members of Snake fast approaching. And wards were already put down there from Snake as well, so of course that Baron that they are looking at. Spirit actually taking a bit of damage from. Not going to be the option here as Snake have put themselves into this mid lane trying to clear this one out. Conan wants to get some revenge after losing the majority of his health bar. But it is Flandre there in the top lane. Does have the teleport available. Probably wants to head back to base before using it. Have that home guard advantage. But now World Elite heading around. They've got a lot of vision around this barren area. Snake sort of dropping the ball just a little bit as far as that is concerned. 
But Death Sentence going to land onto Conan. They decided not to do anything about it because, of course, having their Thresh go headlong into the entire team of World Elite, probably not what they wanted. And without a pick, Gia just can't afford to burn his whole mana bar on Baron, hoping to burst it down quickly. So, honestly, Snake, relatively safe from the Baron pressure that World Elite has definitely picked for Callista and and Cassiopeia, two of the best Baron Securers in the league, even without a Nunu or a strong jungling force when it comes to securing the Baron. Lots of aggression being pushed in. We have to remember that Snake prepped this red side earlier, taking both outer turrets in the top lane. Yeah, precisely. So, of course, this minion wave, if it, it is going to get some time there in the top, is going to be able to push forward and possibly get some damage down onto that inhibitor turret. GA able to make short work of these minions. But, of course, Crystal waiting around this Baron Pit. A little bit on his own, but should be okay here. Of course, Conan's hook doesn't go over walls, so it should be okay. Mystic able to clear out this mid-wave as well. And one thing that World Elite can definitely hang their hat on is the fact that their AD carry now has a whole lot more wave clear. He has a lot of items. He has that, that big mid-game uh, power spike that he probably wanted about four minutes ago, but look, he'll take it at 29 minutes into the game. The issue is that in the interim, there's been no team fights and Maokai's picked up a frozen heart. So Maokai oh won the- Oh my goodness. Maokai always great at dealing with these maneuverable champions like the LeBlanc we famously saw at MSI. And in this situation with the Callista, now has the big armor stacking. The armor purchase will start to come out from Rek'Sai before too long. Probably gonna be a random ones to go along with his current uh, assorted health and magic resist items. Things are really great for Mystic right now, but they won't be great for him oh very soon. Oh my goodness, Conan actually taking a lot of damage here. Tries to flash away, there's the Fate's Call. I think Snake thought that he was far enough away from Mystic that that wasn't going to be able to be used, but man, Conan again getting picked off. It's getting completely chunked out before every fight. Crucial this time. No objectives they're going to be seeding from his health bar being flashing every three minutes, it feels yeah. like. But he can go back. Aluka picks up the farm. Nothing to punish him apart from Ward Elite being able to actually equalize out some wards or even get a little bit of pressure, despite the fact that the health bar, it's been low from Conan multiple times this yeah, game. It certainly has. But of course, I guess with the Shockwave now on cooldown, of course, you, with a fair bit of cooldown reduction, it's going to be up again very, very soon. But there was a little bit of respite to be had there from World Elite, so they're able to get a few wards around. Of course, short-lived vision for World Elite. QSS already to respect mainly the Twisted events, I guess, perhaps the Death Sentence coming through from yep. Thresh, but I think it's mostly to respect Maokai. He's going for a quick QSS. Very low item ceiling does Mystic have, so is happy to fit that into the build, but just not getting a choice to opt into fights before armor's being picked up, and it's probably smart for Snake to run World Elite around long enough to get those first big armor purchases on there, specifically their front line. It'll interact with the big AP stack, that Yu's already put together. This would be very, very tanky frontline. Yeah, and this Orianna, as soon as we see you get a decent ultimate on multiple members, it's going to be very frightening. Void Rush actually coming through here as the tower goes down almost without a response here. WE, he gets spied out there with that scrying orb as Flandre looking to try and make his way in. There's the Righteous Glory popped in spirit. He's looking for an ultimate, looking for an opportunity here. Crystal does make it back to his team at the same time. Spirit, there's the ultimate, oh. a beautiful stun. There's a petrifying gaze onto so many members. But look at Crystal's damage just ripping apart this team. Conan, is he going to come back in? No, he doesn't. He actually is going to escape using the Fate's Call. But somehow no member of Snake is dead and Spirit's gone on the side of WE. It's a really big shockwave. They get the first kill onto Spirit, who through all the use of CC, was actually in a great position to get a four-man ultimate. There was just no follow-up whatsoever in that particular situation. Flandre teleport home guards in. Yeah, he's looking to just try and scout around here. Aluka, he's going to get flanked on the backside and destroyed here. And now there's, Ooh. in fact, oh my goodness, GA just getting eliminated again. Mystic trying to kite around. Crystal doesn't even die in Snake. Their team fighting prowess is back with a vengeance this split. And it feels like Siva is the tonic to all the needs that Snake had towards the end of last season. Now that Crystal's really honed that they play around the movement speed so well, Flandre's job is even easier with the extra movement speed that On The Hunt provides, and the Baron is secured for Snake. And Flandre's genius little loop around the red buff pit there as well to come back and just... Someone's here! <laughs> yeah, I'm, I've spotted you, Aluka. And then he moves back towards the Baron and gets absolutely obliterated, and 
Snake once again with a big power play in this game. I think Koro showed it best to MSI. People always valued home guard boots on Hecarim. It makes sense. He's got that movement speed yeah. damage scaling. But home guard boots on any sort of initiate is so, so powerful. Gets you into positions that would not be possible otherwise. Home guard boots and Righteous score. You're hitting the movement speed cap and then some. You get that important pick and you justify the power of mid game and now late game Maokai which has come up big, 4-0 and 4, looking to finally wrestle some MVP points away from you. Yeah, and speaking of wrestling them away from you, I mean, I think if anyone's... Oh, oh my goodness, another Fates Call! <laughs> and he's going to be saved yet again. Has but that's going to be another dragon. ever been used aggressively? Just once, once down bottom, bottom when lane, they were yep. turret diving. That was the only time. But what I was going to say is the fact that if you were going to pick up the mid-game items for the amount of money that you has had, they are the perfect items that he's sitting on right now. The Haunting guys and the Void Staff as well just picked up on top of the rest of the items that you had. And he's looking fantastic moving forward into this game. Yeah, everything's falling for Snake. Now they're ahead in Dragons 3 and 2. It's been real seesaw in terms of Dragons yeah. this series. Waterleak getting the start and then getting shut out multiple times after picking up a couple. First, two, first three, now two Dragons. Baron buff up, Crystal makes short work of these turrets, and they just keep pushing in strongly. Yeah, and Spirit now might have got ca uh, caught out of position here. The Dissonance doing so much work. Another Wild Growth Spirit still alive somehow, but Crystal is going to take that one down in the end. Mystic finds himself in an awkward position, but World Elite, they've managed to at least secure themselves underneath this turret, but that's just their jungler for nothing. They still have the Shockwave. Actually, it wasn't available. Now off cooldown, finally, not to be no unbeknownst to World Elite, but they'll keep pushing. All out of turrets on the map done, and they're not stopping. Yeah, they're certainly not. The Baron buff still swirling around the Snake members. Mystic trying to get the cheeky auto attacks in, but they have to concede this. The inhibitor going to fall as well, and Snake, they've been fantastic at getting a pick and then getting an objective, and it's happened multiple times this game. And honestly, World Elite have lost games multiple times in the exact same way. Two games in a row, it was Mystic getting initiated on by Rookie and basically losing the game off the momentum shift yeah. that happened in that series versus IG yesterday. World Elite, single picks just bring them down. And in a game where they had control, like game one of this series, picking themselves into corners where pushing that final advantage, whether it's breaking the base, whether it's picking up the fifth dragon, it just got too hard. And World Elite have made it hard on themselves and Snake off the back of the Crystal Siva, have looked really impressive. And man, you has really fit into this lineup beautifully at the same time. I know we've mentioned it time and time again, but now 2-1-6 and six on this Orianna. He's landed shockwaves that have really turned around these team fights. He's worth another mention on yet another champion. And I know I mean, you don't necessarily need to mention champion pool every time you mention a player, but when you're taking over the position of Barker, it is so relevant. Exactly. When you're replacing a, a player who had Two champions he played at a very high competitive level, some decent competitive champions, and then just that was about it. It was about five or six champions yeah. in his pool. So you who has, much like some of his contemporaries, like Rookie, like Pawn, more of a champion ocean, okay, he might yeah. not hit the peaks of a player like Pawn, at the peaks of some of the top mid laners, but he's such a great generalist, and he has those pocket picks like Ziggs that might come up big later in the season that that flexibility in the mid lane champion pool deserves to be harped on about because it's what's going to propel Snake to really assault both the playoffs and the regular season that they did so triumphantly last season. Well, it's true, and he looks like he's fitting into the play style of Snake so beautifully at the same time. You can have a fantastic player, but if you don't have the synergy with the rest of the team, it's not really going to work, and you already feels like the right fit into the role that the, the Snake lineup were looking for. And now they're sieging out this top wave. Beast able to get around there with the Void Rush if he wants to. Crystal actually getting hooked in there. His health bar going down so low. Look at the amount of bounces that come in. That Shockwave onto four members was gigantic. GA, he's going to fall down. Mystic, it might be the time for the Ren set. So you, so incredibly low. But the Dissonance and the Command Protect pick up the kill, the double results from that one and Aluka he was searching for the Oriana but doesn't find it has to take a consolation thrash and beast meanwhile on his own in the bottom lane yeah that's the reason why it looked like such a competitive fight as it wasn't a true 5v5 beast minion wave starts to finally fall down has the void rush available the fight just happened so quickly there was no real chance for him to all in and in fact no tunnels at all on the top side of the map aside from those on yeah. the Baron buff Awkward fight for Snake, but they don't really lose a lot. And given where the minion waves are, they can't really be punished 
for some over aggression. Yeah, and this is what Snake generally does. They make interesting calls when they're trying to break through the base. Of course, they've conceded a little bit of gold, but let's have a look at this one. So Crystal gets hooked. That's the big factor. So the spell shield's off target, falls very, very low, will flash, but just ends up dying at some point here yeah, to the to the Ren coming through. It's a really nice shockwave, but you can see on the minimap, Rek'Sai's nowhere near this fight. That's why it looks so competitive from World Elite. They'll go on to win the fight. Finally, Mystic gets the Ren sets that he wanted. 24 minutes into the game, but it was actually the backside of the uh, the the shield, you know, the yeah, shielding, the command protect, the yeah. command protect that actually got the kill, the 200 oh, or so damage. That was mean as well, Beast stealing away some puppies there that Spirit was trying to take down. And he's and continuing this split push. This Rexide is going to get huge. You just get to these awkward sides of the game when Siva has the most DPS possible, short of maybe subbing out a Phantom Dancer for the Static Shiv. And Callista just has that situation where you just you buy the QSS and Last Whisper because it's the only real thing that fits in the build after the Hurricane. Yeah, well, it's true. I mean, it's the two-item spike that you really look for as a Callista player when you're deciding to go for this Ren set build. But it is a bit awkward after that point. I was speculating, you know, personal speculation that Black Cleaver might fit into the build. Yeah. Unfortunately, you build a lot of health, so, I mean, you're spending... Of the 3,000 gold, you're spending a good... 1,000, 1,500 gold on health, which isn't an ideal statistic for an AD carry, but it felt like the cooldown reduction and just the interactions in a team fight with the Ren sets might be a relevant statistic, but no one's tried it yet. But yes, speaking of trying Spirit's things, got hooked, though. The box came through as well. Spirit is going to survive this one, but Flandre's in there. Spirit, the only one hit by that Ooh. shockwave, but Conan getting ripped apart. A Luka as well. Very, very low. Beautiful three-man knock-up, though, as Conan tries to get some work done. Mystic now in the back line. You just eliminates him. And that damage from this Orianna, that just makes it look unfair. And that is somehow a clean ace for Snake. And they're going to clean up this game. Yeah, Mystic was licking his lips, actually flashed in aggressively. But the difference between Mystic's build and, the, and Crystal's build is that one crit, 550 damage, just finished him off. No potential for the Ren set. And Snake keep heaping on the pressure on World Elite. Two splits in a row. Their first victory seems to elude them. Zero and four on the season are World Elite. Yeah, unfortunate, but it was fantastic play to come out from Snake there as well. That first game, a massive grind here for both of the teams. And then Snake just, they had the momentum coming from that victory. And it, you can't really, uh, I guess, discount the fact that if you lose a really long game like that, it makes the second one very difficult to play the out. The fatigue that comes with the mental fatigue in yeah. particular in esports really makes it tough to come up strong. Spirit, once again, just found wanting. You mentioned he was hooked in that last fight. He was out of position a few times. He keeps getting forced onto this Sejuani. It's almost that situation where you're priced in, okay, what's available? Sejuani, Nunu. Nunu doesn't have a lot of carry yeah. potential. Tried it against IG, didn't work out. Sejuani has more playmaking potential, but it's not the Nidalee and Rek'Sai. And when, it, when you can so confidently lock in Rek'Sai over a champion like Callista that was so intrinsic to Crystal's playstyle last season. Now you have the flexibility to say, okay, we take the aggressive, assertive mid-game jungler. You go for the late-game jungler, and that means that you can never pressure in the way that Spirit was winning games basically solo last season for World Elite. Yeah, it's looking like it's going to have to be a different option taken by World Elite, but congratulations to Snake. Another fantastic start to this split. After the break, we are going to have RNG taking on M3 as our final two series of the of the day are going to wrap this one up. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have a short break. Don't go 